Information presented on Sky News Real Estate is general in nature. Viewers should seek their own professional advice before purchasing products or services. Sky News Real Estate may receive a fee for commercial arrangements with companies featured in this programming. Real Estate. Smart Investing. Hello and welcome to Smart Investing. I'm Chris Gray. On tonight's show, Australia's most expensive apartment has recently been sold for $60 million. So what do you get for all that cash and could you be one of their neighbours for a lot less money? You'll always pay more for clothes and accessories that have a big brand label, but does the same go for a property that's been branded too? And if money was no object, what would you include in a luxury apartment? Well, joining us on the show tonight is Erin, Erin Van Chul, Director of Sales and Marketing at One Barangaroo, and Charles Tarby, Chairman and Owner of Century 21 Australasia. Now, I'm sure I stuffed up your, uh, your surname, I'm sorry for that. Quite all right. But One Barangaroo, a lot of people don't know about it. Tell us all about it. So, One Barangaroo is really exciting for Australia. It is Australia's first six-star branded, uh, hospitality branded residences. The key differentiator really between Barangaroo and other prime um, apartments within Australia, we only have 82 sitting on, in, on top of around 340 six-star hotel rooms. Um, we have an incredible amenity. There's a private uh, residence entrance, private pool deck, private concierge, all for the residences. All of these layers, uh, also with obviously an incredible location, add up to, to make it Australia's most luxurious residential development. Now, hopefully we'll be able to play some uh, videos, some pictures very soon. Um, James Packer was reported to have spent 60 million on a duplex, and I'm sure with confidentiality there's a limit to what you can say, but uh, yeah, it sounds like it must be a fantastic apartment. Yeah, there is a limit to what I can say, but I can say that um, each residence within One Barangaroo is, is different. Um, it, they all vary um, as a result of the architectural design of the building. Uh, Mr. Packer's purchase was very new, unique, um, but it does involve an amount of customization to city's needs beyond the initial purchase price. And obviously we've got the video there, it looks absolutely fantastic. Charles, it must be impossible to try and value a, a property at an exact dollar amount when it comes to that level. What's the difference between someone thinking it's worth 60 or 50 or 70? Yeah, is it I worth potentially well, anything at that no, value? I think, I think valuers uh, and valuation levels stop at around about two and a half million. They start, uh, they, they sort of get a little bit impractical above that price in many cases because if you look at, uh, I was looking at property on the weekend uh, uh, with my daughter and, and she was looking in this area and it was up to three million dollars and I looked at the house and thought you could construct the property for 800,000. So does that mean the land was worth 2.2? .2? And so I guess it just gets to a point where supply and demand kicks in and then there's a level where it's what people want. It really has very little to do. If you look at some of the prices properties have, have achieved, it's very hard for a valuer to sit there and value a property like that. And you would have thought that most of these super wealthy, they're not necessarily getting a 90% mortgage with uh, LMI. So, no, generally yeah. it's 100% mortgage. It's against their business <laughs> or something else they've got uh, from, from my experience. But no, it's not really about valuation. It's about what people want when you get to a certain level. And, and, it's, uh, and there's a very few people that can afford those prices. So they'll pay it if that's what they want. Yeah. Now, Erin, this is the first branded apartment. So people might have heard of like Trump Towers or something like that. I assume that's a, a branded thing. Is, is this the way to go these days? And yeah, so branded residences around the world um, have been around for quite some time, but this is uh, a new thing for Australia. Um, other developers do sort of use slogans around being paired with hotels or offering a hotel-like service. But um, there hasn't been anything in Australia that will offer the service that Crown with their 20 years worth of experience in Australia is, is able to offer. Um, the development will be fully serviced. So if you want to order a burger at three o'clock in the morning, if you want housekeeping, fresh flowers, valet parking, um, a full suite of concierge services, whatever that is, that is available to you as if you were staying in any other of Crown's 
uh, five-star hotels. I think that's the big difference too, Aaron. There are properties in, in the city of Sydney that are uh, apartment complexes that are next door to other apartment complexes. And because of the way they've been operated by the people within them, the concierge services, they're worth more because people want to live there. They're ne not necessarily any different in terms of their structure and the size, but it's because of lifestyle. And, and there's one particular apartment complex in Sydney that I know the values are there only because of the way in which when you walk into the building, the services in the building, where the staff treat you, the whole uh, experience is so much better than across the road. And people are paying more just to get in there. And yeah. Sir Charles, when it comes to selling luxury property versus a half million dollar one, is the campaigns completely different? Well, well it is because, you know, the, 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 as I was saying before, when you get to a certain level, uh, there's a lot more people. There, there's hundreds of thousands of people at a half a million dollar property. Uh, there's probably a handful of people that would be in a position to purchase property like that. So it really comes down to what people want. And I think it's not so much how you market it, it's your connections, your database, the way you're structured in business. There are plenty of people that come across your desk over the years in business that you know, you just pick up the phone, you say, oh, I've got a property and this is one. And, and, and that's really how most of those top end sales are made. Uh, from what I've seen around the traps as well. So Erin, what's actually driving the demand for these branded properties? Well, I think it is being driven by a lack of, a lack of prime stock mm. um, within Sydney. We just haven't had uh, the available apartments that really meet, meet that, the expectations of the ultra high net worth individual. And Australia is attracting more and more ultra high net worths. Um, I think we anticipate that through the Knight Frank Wealth Report that we'll see an extra 37% ultra high net worths in Australia over the next five years. Combining that with 88% of high net worth Australians um, so, thought that their wealth increased last year, we need housing stock for these people and it just hasn't existed. So I think that has absolutely um, driven so demand. So give them the casino to spend their money at the <laughs> same time, eh, Charles? Well, <laughs> I, I think that the, uh, in Sydney, a lot of the marketplaces, there's been a lot of construction, the developers turning over stock. They just want to get in and turn over their stock. And, and not many of them will take the chance uh, on doing something of high level quality. And this is why these sorts of complexes will always hold their value, particularly if you've got all the services around them. Barangaroo is amazing. My office yeah. is just a few hundred metres from there now. And my elevator goes straight into Wynyard Station. I, I walk a few hundred metres, I'm in Barangaroo. It's a whole different world. And uh, there are not too many places like that in Australia. And I think that's what's so special about that area. Absolutely. So, Erin, who's actually behind the creation? Because I guess you don't get any old architect and any old builder to uh, build something like this. No, and that's all part of the value add and what makes the building so special. I mean, we've got um, Wilkinson Air, our architects. They're out of London. They've got an incredible global track record. Um, they do amazing things with glass, um, glass technology. Our interior designers are Maya Davis, they're out of New York. Um, again, you know, their sort of um, in interior architecture, given all of our apartments are so unique, has been absolutely amazing. Um, and then our landscape um, architects are um, Saint Leger, based out of Southeast Asia, and they've done a beautiful job um, in terms of the, the pool decks, which are just, just stunning. So Crown has really bought brought together a team of experts from around the world, a global development, but here in Australia, and absolutely it will rival the best of what's available in the world today. Well, hopefully we'll have a special media day that we can check it out, eh, there Charles? There will be a media what day, you and you're more than welcome. Well, we might be lucky, Chris, might be a couple we'll get of left over, they can't Get Tom to bring his swimmers along. There yeah. will not be any left yeah. over that we can't <laughs> just, just, We won't be giving them away. I said if we're really lucky. Yeah. <laughs> You'd have to be very lucky. None of those. Well, yes. well, None of Charles, those. let's come back down to earth. Yes. Let's talk about, uh, I guess, the average properties and what's happening with the clearance rates at the yeah, moment. It's still very interesting. You know, the, the clearance rates last year, this time last year, was 74.1%. So uh, you look at how they've been trending nowadays, it's 67 and a half for the weekend. Uh, not a massive difference, but 67 and a half, as I mentioned to so many people, is still a very nice marketplace to be in. There's more stock, uh, although the stock levels are slightly changed, which we'll talk about in a second. But uh, the, the issue really is that everything's sort of slowed down. Everybody's got this special pace that they're moving at now compared to what it was like. Uh, as I mentioned uh, with my daughter looking at properties, it, where she looked, 
you might find one property there six months ago. She was able to roam around and find a dozen. So it's a very, very different world. Uh, Sydney came in at 67.8% and they had 1,055 auctions. And Melbourne had 1,656. So they're back up there. But their clearance rate was 68.9. But the special one this week, not too special, but was Adelaide, was 69.7. So nobody broke the 70% barrier uh, of auctions from the weekend. Of course, that figure will change as we get through the week. Wonderful. Downwards. And what about home, homes advertised for sale? Yeah, they've been trending upwards for quite some time, but they started to slow down. Last week was only a plus 0.48 per cent uh, of, of stock level rise. This week it's a minus 1.27 per cent in stock. Uh, I'm not quite sure what that's about because there has been a maybe it's because there has been a significant amount coming on over the last five or six weeks, and now people are starting to recognise that. Oh, you know, maybe I'm not going to get that big price I was hoping for, and, they're, and that they're, they're coming back. But we still have 3.87% uh, more stock at the moment than we had this time last year. Again, with fewer interested or fewer pressured buyers. So that's what the change is, is that's coming through. And what's happening with rent price? Now, not a lot, Chris. It's been levelling out mostly across the country. Again, it seems to be levelling out in tune with what's going on with the rest of the marketplace. You've still got some great performing areas like Hobart still moving along, and I think that's part of the halo effect. And I'm wondering when that's going to slow down, possibly when more of the stock that was being built that investors picked up comes on the market, and then all of a sudden there might be some more competition in that arena. Wonderful. And then just finally the vacancy rates. Yeah, they're, they're really good. I mean, wow, Victoria, 0.59% vacancy rate. I, you know, you, you hardly see anything like that. And, and, and beating Sydney of all places, Sydney was 2.06%. Are still very solid, but Perth's back has been floating back and forward, but nowhere near the high tens and elevens that it was. Six point nine seven percent for Perth side. Again, I'm really happy to see that marketplace become a change because it's now pretty much hit the bottom and starting to, to move uh, upwards. So three point two one percent over the three capital cities was Wonderful. the average. Chris, sounds good. Thanks for those results. Now, Darren, before we jump to the break, so how's the uh, development progressing, and uh, when's it due to complete? Because quite often you see them do all the you, nothing happens happens and then instantly it's, it's well, all done. that's definitely not the case at Barangaroo. <laughs> if you're down there enjoying any of the restaurants and eateries and bars that are really active yeah. down there, as you said, it's a great precinct. If you look north, you'll see three really big cranes. Um, they're ours. We're well out the ground. Um, it's, Branded cranes as well, I've seen. There is some yep. branding on some of the cranes, um, but it's really exciting to see. And every time you look over the site and you see more activity, you see more happening. But we're well and truly out of the ground. We're on the way, and we expect completion in sort of early 2021. So three right, okay. years. A couple of years away. Yeah. Wonderful. Sounds good. Thanks for joining us, Charles. Now, we'll have more on the luxury property market when we return with Tom Panos from News Corp. And just a quick reminder, you can also get a copy of my digital book of my book, The Effless Empire. Just go to yourempire.com.au. Now, we're going to take a short break, but we'll be back soon. You're watching Sky News Real Estate. Smart investing. Kia's seven-day sale has been extended. On top of great drive-away deals, receive a $777 gift card across selected models. Plus, all Kias come with Australia's best seven-year warranty. Kia's seven-day sale extended until March 25. What do you get when you buy an investment property with DHA? You can spend time with your kids because your investment is secure. You can keep your lifestyle while we maintain your property. You can have time off when your rent is guaranteed. You can feel free because we manage your tenants. With DHA, you can have the freedom to look forward to tomorrow and today. Find out more at dha.gov.au slash look forward. has great Australian businesses that you can rely on. Yellow, yellow. From doctors yellow, to dog groomers. Yellow, yellow. And did you know you can book appointments for whatever you need all in one place. It's so simple. Yellow. 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 Need it? Yellow has it. Yellow. Find, choose, connect at yellowpages.com.au. Yellow. 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 Getting hammered with ridiculous interest on your credit card? Yeah, me too. But check this out. With Finder, you can finally make that change to a better credit card. Just drop in your balance and interest rate and Finder instantly calculates what the banks are offering. 
couple of clicks could save you hundreds of thousands a year in credit card interest. One more click to apply. Find better. Hello, Covermore Assistant. How can I help you? I'm signing on behalf of Julie Allen. She's injured herself in Indonesia in the surf. As there is a medical facility about half an hour away, but you wouldn't take a dog there. We suspected Jules had a serious spine injury and we needed to get her out of there as soon as possible. She was in a very remote area, but, you know, we used to challenges like that. Covermore saves lives and men's broken holidays. We're for travellers and for travelling. It would be nice to stay in a cosy boutique hotel somewhere along the coast. Not sure exactly where yet. But annoyingly, on a lot of websites, you can only see results for the exact location you search for. Well, Trivago does it differently. On Trivago, you can simply use the map, explore the whole area, and as you move along, Trivago keeps showing you all the hotels that meet your search criteria. And that's one more way Trivago helps you find your ideal hotel for the best price. Hotel Trivago. Do kids really need to have a mobile phone, a connected device at schools? Isn't it distracting? Well, we're going to find out. We're going to talk to some of the experts who know. Should it be banned? Well, we'll have that debate. Beatty and Newman, Monday night. See you then. Welcome back to Sky News Real Estate. Smart Investing. Welcome back to Smart Investing. Well, joining me on the show tonight is Erin Van Tool, Director of Sales and Marketing at One Barangaroo. And we've just been joined by News Corp real estate expert Tom Panos. So, Erin, we've been seeing these beautiful pictures and uh, video of uh, One Barangaroo. What are the prominent trends around luxury property in Sydney at the moment or in Australia? I think actually the, the trend in, in the property market is actually luxury property. Um, I, I think we're seeing that developers are moving away from investor grade stock. Um, we're moving more into apartments that are actually livable for Australians and certainly appealing more to high net worth and ultra high net worth um, owners. Um, I think that there have been penthouses in the past that have been built on top of um, buildings that still hold a significant amount of investor stock. And I don't think those have particularly appealed necessarily to the high net worth or the ultra high net worth market, living in a building that's very transient still. So I think we are seeing a trend towards buildings that are more totally prime or super prime, as we would call it. And so what's behind that influx? Is, it, is that purely just because of the dollar level that they've got to spend? I think that it, it, is, it is the buyer. It's buyer demand. Um, I think, you know, Sydney is a, you know, the price growth as well in the, in the Sydney prime market has, has you know, it's a, makes a very compelling um, argument for investing in prime property here, you know, both for locals and, and for those coming in from abroad. So Sydney grew by 37% in, in the, sorry, 10.7% in the prime market last year. Um, you know, that's huge. And we've seen, you know, 10 consecutive quarters of top 10 growth globally in Sydney. You know, it makes for a, a very compelling argument for investing in, in prime property in Sydney. Now, Tom, yeah. you talk about social media a lot and yeah. marketing properties. Yeah. The question I was going to ask you is, does social media still work when you're looking at kind of potentially $60 million properties? But out of interest, I was actually on Facebook and I saw Erin's kind of adverts and the beautiful pictures mm. on, on social media. And that's when I thought, hey, that would be great for the show. OK, so what we clearly know is that 85% 80, of digital revenue is split between Google and Facebook. And what we clearly know is the eyeballs on Facebook is incredible. So we know that... Passive, the passive buyer is on Facebook. So I, I, it doesn't surprise me that, you know, that real estate agents are using targeted Facebook ads and you can target by geography, you can target by a lot of things on Facebook. So this old approach with a spray and pray and hope you find a buyer is being replaced by far more intelligent means. So it doesn't surprise me at all that that has come up on your timeline because you can strategically aim to hit people now with Facebook. And it's probably not because I was super wealthy. It's probably I was just in, interested in property. Ah, uh, well, uh, Chris, <laughs> they, might know, they might know more about you than you the, know about you. So they might be the tax yes, man. Yes, you shouldn't have received our Facebook it, ad. It, it, could be, <laughs> it could be the tax man after me. Um, OK, so what, what are some of the uh, common requests, Erin, 
like you've got these people with almost limitless budgets, what kind of things do they want? Well, it's about finding a property that, that matches your lifestyle um, and whether that's the lifestyle now or the lifestyle they intend to lead once the children leave home. Um, it's about finding a property that suits that and these buyers are not looking to compromise. Um, so this was obviously at the, the forefront of, you know, of our minds creating or the team's minds creating one Barangaroo and, you know, you need to look at things like location, the size of the apartments, parking and storage still, you know, really, really important, um, as well as obviously the view lines and then the returns. Um, you know, all of those things have to come together um, to make it you know, to make yeah. it work. And again, I'm not sure if we can uh, scroll the pictures again, but um, the pictures that we're getting there is, is just absolutely uh, incredible. Tom, a question could be is, how come developers don't sell by auction? Because virtually every other property in the country gets sold by auction, but developers, it's always private treaty. Yeah, so there's a few reasons. Reason number one is that um, when you've got a product and there's uh, replicas of that, multiple issues, and that's come up on the screen there now, um, what you'll notice is that um, developers may think, hang on a second, um, we can't differentiate this one against another one. So there's a reason why sometimes developers don't do it. Um, another reason why uh, developers don't do it is that their just sales approach has been um, they, they train their sales teams to say, that, you know, these are the, the numbers that we're looking for. Um, but having said that, I have seen the occasional developer that's got a unique product in a marketplace that is an auction marketplace, and um, they'll give it a test run and with the aim to get an incredible price, and that then becomes the benchmark on other properties. Um, so that would be the answer to that. Yeah. Now, Erin, very quickly, is if I wanted to be James Packer's neighbour, what is roughly the price I might be able to get in? If you can uh, give us maybe a bit of the range at all. Uh, look, it's all our apartments are so different. Um, you know, we do have, um, yeah, we don't have anything smaller than than two bedrooms, so we don't have any one beds. What I will say is that we're not. Um, this is not a two-tier building. So whether you're buying a two-bed or whether you're buying a six-bedroom apartment, the level, the standard of finish is exactly the same throughout. So, so I can live just, just like James, but live, in a smaller apartment. You can live in an apartment that's the same as the person in terms of finishes that's living in the penthouse. It's well, all the same. And I guess what does the future hold? Is this just the start of things? Is the next sale we're going to see 100 million maybe? Well... That would be lovely. Um, you know, I think according to the Knight Frank Wealth Report, which has just been released, um, and what my team and I are, are seeing on the ground, we, we certainly feel that it's looking really positive for the prime and super prime market in Sydney. Um, only 6% of Australian ultra high net worths are thinking of leaving the country, compared to Australia being the third choice um, for ultra high net worths as an immigration destination. Um, so we think that you know, the idea of ultra high net worths wanting to secure their piece of luxury property in Sydney is, is probably very strong and will remain so. But there's only one, one Barangaroo, so you'd have to get in quick. Wonderful. And if people want to reach you, one Barangaroo or Knight Frank? OneBarangaroo.com or Knight Frank, yeah. Absolutely. Wonderful. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Tom, tell us about what other properties are around, maybe at a slightly uh, smaller price range. Slightly low. So I'll give you this price guide. 24 uh, uh, Couts Crescent in Collaroy, presented to you by Lisa Novak, one of the great agents there. I think she's been there for a decade in um, the Northern Beaches area there in particular. Novak, the agency there, Mark and Lisa Novak, that property there that I think has come up on the screen. If you're looking at there, we're talking about water views on all three levels. Water views on all three levels. A gigantic home, massive home. Um, you could go get it subdivided. Um, the, the home to build this in today's marketplace would be around three and a half million. Um, they simply don't build them like this. But the main thing is views, views, views. Have a look at that. Uh, 24 Couts Crescent Collaroy. Go see Lisa Novak. Uh, price guide there is four million and fifty thousand to four point five million. So it ticks all the boxes. That looks gorgeous, and I've got to tell you, um, at that sort of price level, I would say that that thing's going to do very well. Looking at that and looking at the position. Wonderful. Again. Views always sell, don't they, Tom? Yeah. Now, the market's obviously cooling at the moment. Yeah. 
What can vendors do if the property is not selling? I think if it's not selling, you've got to look at you know the reason why properties don't sell. It's either the price is too high or the marketing's poor. And I think you've got to have a look at and say, what lever do I need to change? Because you're either going to be in stuck mode, and that is helping other people sell their properties while they use yours as a benchmark, or you're going to be proactive and say, hang on a second, if there's only 30 properties that are being sold in this uh, area every month, are we going to be the ones that get sold? Or are we going to be the ones that are actually assistance to the ones that are being sold? So I think you've got to have a crucial conversation with your agent and say, hey, at what number do we actually get energy and buyers back into this property? If they're a very bad agent and the agency period's up, maybe you've got to sack them because if they haven't been actually been doing a good job and been talking to you, giving you feedback, having quality conversations, going through extensive marketing, showing where the buyers are coming from, you know, maybe the agent's a problem, but generally speaking, Chris, I've got to say, in a market that's transitioning a little bit down, about 10% in a lot of markets, I would say you've got to have a crucial conversation as a vendor and say, hang on a second, I'm losing 10%, but guess what? If I'm upgrading, I'm probably better off upgrading in this market because the thing I'm going to buy has probably come down more than the thing I'm selling. And what we know is that economists tell us that people, people prefer to hang on to what they've got than try and win, which doesn't make economic sense. So I would say think the whole book, sell and buy, what's the changeover figure? And again, is just very, very quickly, everyone thinks the cheapest agent is, is the best one, but these are perfect scenarios when you've got to pick the best agent. 100%. A year ago, there was a strategy in real estate, the market's good, copy and cut. Get a cheap agent, they copy the formula, they cut their fee and they get the job done. Not in 2018. You need a deal maker, not an order taker. Tom, you're the best. Erin, thanks for joining us as well this evening. Thank you. Thanks for joining us at home. Until next week, I'm Chris Gray. Good night. Information presented on Sky News Real Estate is general in nature. Viewers should seek their own professional advice before purchasing products or services. Sky News Real Estate may receive a fee for commercial arrangements with companies featured in this programming.